Hey guys, and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be talking you through some of the ways that you can make the most out of your slinger bag. If you've seen some of my previous videos, you'll see that I've made a video for beginners and intermediate players, but today we're looking at the slinger bag use for advanced players. However, if you're not an advanced player, I'm sure you'll gain something from this video too. So let's get into it. Welcome back. My name is Ashley Neves and I'm a professional tennis coach based in the UK and I run the Tennis Mentor YouTube and Instagram accounts, giving tips to tennis players, tennis coaches and tennis parents. So if you found this video, it's either because you've got yourself a slinger bag or you're thinking about getting one. I've had mine for over a year now and I've found hundreds of ways that you can use it. So today I'm going to show you a few that advanced tennis players can use. The slinger bag is a basic ball machine with very simple functions, but use it in the right way and you can start to build some really good drills that can help you to train for the match court. Although it won't be super realistic, as if you were playing with an opponent at the other end, you can manipulate the machine to set up certain scenarios. I'm going to show you a few today and hopefully you'll be able to build your own from them. Let's take a look now. So for advanced tennis players, you can do any of the basic drills that we've seen in the beginners and intermediates videos. But you'll see here over the next few drills, these are slightly more complex and tailored towards what you would see when you're playing on the match court. Now this first exercise, you'll see I've got a yellow cone set up for my recovery position here and an orange cone, which will correlate to where I'm aiming my shots. So I'm gonna be hitting forehands on the run. Every time I aim my forehand cross court, I'm going to recover behind the orange cone. And every time I decide to go down the line to the yellow cone, I'm going to recover further to the center of the court. This will be realistic for what you would do on the match court, because when you're hitting cross court, you don't need to get all the way back towards the middle. You'll also see that when I'm doing these exercises, when I'm put under pressure on the forehand, I'm actually going to be hitting more of an open stance forehand. And when I'm less under pressure, I'll be stepping in with a more neutral stance to go down the line. Let's check it out. Cross court to the orange, down the line to the yellow. Cross court to the orange, down the line to the yellow. So I've set the trajectory of the machine to 20 degrees and I've set the speed to its slowest setting and the feed setting halfway. You can see how tough that one is straight away. So as you will see, I can do exactly the same drill on the backhand side. All I've done is I've turned the machine with the same settings to point to my backhand corner and I've changed the yellow and orange cones at this end to correlate to recovering further when I hit down the line. So you can probably hear I'm a bit out of breath after that first exercise. It's good to do it in sets of 10, have a breather, switch it on again. Having this remote allows you to do that from your pocket. But um, yeah, let's see how I get on on the backhand side. So remember, it's the same settings. I'm going to recover to the yellow marker when I hit to the yellow and to the orange when I hit to the orange. OK, let's go. Apologies for the grunting. Two more. Make it. And have a breather. It's tough. So those drills were great for developing your forehands and backhands on the move, looking at open stance and neutral stance, hitting to different directions and recovering to the appropriate positions. This next exercise is going to be working on your approach and volley. So I'll switch it on. You'll see that I'm going to aim my approach shot down the line to the yellow and my volley cross court to the orange to start off with. I'll start with a set of 10 and then we'll change the direction. So I'm going to hit my ground stroke, come in for a volley, volley, then back pedal for my ground stroke again. Ground stroke, volley. As you can see, to start off with, I'm going yellow on my ground stroke, orange on my volley. 
Now, of course, we wouldn't approach volley, approach volley in succession in a match, but what it does do for you is allow you to work on your movement going forwards down the court and work on your fitness when recovering back as well. Good. So the approach and volley exercises can be done on the forehand and backhand side. You can change the target positions, cater it to what you'd like to work on. But the overall theme here is giving yourself a good workout and trying to manipulate the machine so that you can work on the relevant footwork patterns you'll need for the match court. As I said, the forwards movement is going to be super realistic. We wouldn't move backwards like this in a point. However, it's making you fitter and it's making you faster. So I'm gonna do this on the backhand side now. Approach and volley. And again, approach, split step, volley. And again, approach, split step, volley. You can change it up. You could go for a forehand approach and a backhand volley, or you can go for a backhand slice approach for a forehand volley. Ah. Oh. So manipulate the drill to work on what you need to. Oh yeah. So there we go. A simple approach and volley drill. So on this exercise, we're going to be looking at your serve and ball three. Very important shots to win matches. We know that over 70% of points are finished within the first four shots. So it's crucial that you can hit a good serve and you can put ball three where you want it to go. So you can see here, I've set up targets for my serve to go down the tee and ball three to go down the line into my opponent's backhand if they are right-handed. Um, I've set the machine to the slowest feed setting and on the speed setting, I've got it two notches up from slowest with a trajectory of 20. For me, that setup is good for the timing of my serve. Obviously, if you've got a faster rhythm, you may want to increase the speed or the feed setting so that you've got less time between your serve and ball three. But what you want to do is set up the machine so that you're hitting your serve, landing, and then being ready for ball number three. So let's check it out. So the first ball's for a serve. Second ball. Oh. There we go. So you can see that after my serve, I'm ready to pounce on ball number three. Oh. Good. That was quite a defensive ball three. I think I put an extra bounce in there on my serving routine. So I'll go for two bounces. Oh. Oh. Perfect. So I figured out there that with two bounces in my serve routine, that gives me the perfect timing for ball number three. Uh, oh, tough. What's also nice about setting up the slinger for this is it gives you a bit of a workout. Uh, uh, sometimes practicing your serve can be a bit slow, a bit static, but this makes it a lot more interesting. Uh, and a lot more of a challenge. <clears throat> right, let's, let's try and get one of the cones now. Here we go. Uh, uh, good. A bit noisy over there, aren't they? So as I said at the start of the video, these drills are targeted towards advanced players, but you can sure give them a go if you're an intermediate player as well. If you saw the video for intermediates, you would have noticed that I placed the machine on the other side of the net more frequently to increase the challenge level so that you can practice receiving a ball from the other end of the court as you would in a tennis match. However, for setting up more complicated drills like the ones we've seen in this video today, where you're hitting two different types of shots within the same drill, actually putting the machine on your side of the net makes it much, much easier to control and manage. However, there is nothing stopping you from putting the machine on the other side if you want to make your ball feel a lot heavier when receiving it. So there you go. They were just a few of the drills that I've built since using my slinger bag. There may be a specific area of your game that you want to develop, so try thinking about how you can evolve those exercises to be more suitable for your tennis. The drills that I used are a good place to start, but try to personalize them for your needs. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, consider subscribing to the channel and let me know what you thought in the comments below. I can't wait to see you next time. Take care.